You can make this epic D&D map in about five minutes. And I already made a video about how to do it, but there was a problem with the last step of my tutorial. So we're gonna recap, talk about what not to do, and then we're gonna fix it. Because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together. And did I really just say we're gonna fix it? Quick recap, step one, print out a cool free map like one from Dyson Logos, or take a little extra time to draw your own around some randomly rolled dice because it's fun. Two, carefully tear the edges of your paper, noting that the short edge may be harder to tear smoothly compared to the long edge of the paper. Three, optionally crumple up that paper and then smooth it back out. And then the last step before you pop it in the oven for a few minutes, add our secret ingredient, soy sauce. Believe me, I tried using tea, but it was just taking forever to get dark at all. So I just looked around my kitchen for other dark liquids. I tried balsamic vinegar. I tried mixing in coffee grounds. I even tried a little barbecue sauce, but soy sauce is cheap and has the exact color and consistency I was going for. So just splash some drops all around your paper, then even it out with a wide craft brush or... But that part right there was the problem. I was pretty fast and loose about the amount of soy sauce going onto my paper. Fortunately, whether due to the amount that I happened to use or perhaps the brand of soy sauce, which was from Aldi, by the way, my map came out perfectly dry and yeah, kind of smelling like soy sauce, but good, not too pungent. And that smell has long since faded. And it definitely did not start burning in my oven, but apparently not everyone who tried my method was so lucky. Q video from Super Geek Mike titled, I almost burned my house down making these D&D handouts. Then I spread soy sauce onto the sleeping giant menu and the black spider's letter. This is the solution that Bob World Builder uses to brown his papers. And yeah, from this footage, it looks like Mike used more soy sauce than I did, but I never gave a specific measurement. So let's just see how it turned out. The soy sauce pages came out looking a bit darker than Bob World Builders had, but they looked really cool. However, there were a couple of white spots, sections that I hadn't managed to cover when I brushed the soy sauce across the paper. Okay, nice. I like the darker look. That and the fact that it takes five minutes instead of an hour is why I use soy sauce instead of tea in the first place. So what really went wrong here? So I splashed more soy sauce onto the paper to even out those parts of the handout. I cooked them for about six minutes until they were pretty much dry. Mmm, that triple or possibly quadruple dose of our secret ingredient is how we got the title of that video. And also fortunately, the title is an example of YouTube exaggeration. Mike and his house are fine. Well, mostly. The soy sauce pages were kind of a failure. I used way too much by going back for a second pass. And it was also sticky and it made the room reek of soy sauce. So we've identified the issue and we know it's better to err on the side of too little soy sauce than too much. Therefore, if you just want to go ahead with a couple drops, you're good here. Go make something cool. But if you're like me, and now you have to know exactly how much soy sauce to use for the best results, keep watching. I'm going to test a few different measured amounts and do my best to give you an actual recipe on how much is too much, how much is too little, and hopefully how much is just right for the color you're going for. So if you already tried this out, or if you swear by a totally different method, please leave your recipe down in the comments while I briefly tell you about this video's sponsor, Describe. Describe is an award-winning TTRPG publisher known for rich, descriptive text, immersive soundscapes, and interactive maps. I've worked with them for years, and I've used their scenes directly or for inspiration over and over again. Describe has over 10,000 easily searchable, professionally written scenes of box text for GMs and players, and about a thousand of those scenes are completely free. And they have a handful of different tiers if you're more interested in their high quality music, atmosphere, and sound effects instead of the written descriptions or the maps. And you can get 10% off any of that when you use code BOB in the affiliate link below so they know who sent you. So first, because I only have one good baking tray that can fit a whole piece of paper, I decided to scale down this initial phase of testing by taking one piece of paper and turning it into 16 pieces of paper roughly 1 16th the size. This gave me a lot of samples to work with for testing different methods and amounts of soy sauce, but this also gave me the idea to test different treatments of paper. So I left eight pieces as is, but for the other eight, I crumpled them up and flattened them out for a textured look, wondering if this might affect the absorption in some way. 
But then, when I started to label all of my samples, I realized, since I never measured anything at all, I have no baseline for what amount of soy sauce to actually start with. So I had to start by working backwards. I did a test pour to measure an amount that felt okay at full scale, then transferred the liquid from a measuring cup, which was way too big, to a tablespoon, which was still a little too big. So then I transferred that to one of our regular spoons, which fit pretty much perfectly. But it wasn't until immediately after I poured it onto the paper that I realized fitting perfectly in that last spoon didn't matter at all because I don't know the exact volume of that spoon. Regardless, I put it in the oven for five minutes at 350, just like last time. But I did already notice something important here. Brushing the liquid on smooth paper rather than crumpled paper is guaranteed to give you a more even color simply because it's easier to brush the soy sauce in nice even strokes across that page. And when I took it out, I wasn't super pleased. This was definitely darker than I wanted, it didn't seem completely dry at the time, and I completely forgot to put any liquid on the back of the paper. So this preliminary full-scale test was full of important reminders that would immediately reshape this experiment. Like, assuming that my poorly measured amount was about three quarters of a tablespoon, I hypothesized that about a half a tablespoon on either side of a full piece of paper would be perfect. So that would be my medium amount of soy sauce, and I'd do some tests with more than that, some tests with less than that, but no. Because of course, traditional kitchen measurements or the imperial measurement system just doesn't easily scale down to 1 16th for the testing I had in mind. And the idea of converting to metric and buying a graduated cylinder or a pipette dropper would just add layers of complexity and more room for error, potentially invalidating the conclusion of yet another video. So I decided to try using one quarter scale pieces of paper and stick to the clean measurements of the implements that I have, trusting that these cat themed measuring spoons will be somewhat accurate. So I had one sample with a quarter teaspoon on either side of the paper, probably too little one sample with a half teaspoon on either side, probably just right, and one sample with a whole teaspoon on either side, probably too much. But even as I poured that first quarter teaspoon, it felt like too much for this first little piece of paper. And after coating all three, I captured this shot to show how they all looked pretty much the same to me. So at this point, I was wondering if each of these look very similar because maybe they actually absorbed about the same amount of liquid before the excess was just brushed away and then they would all come out looking exactly the same, but I was totally wrong. I got very different results for each one. With the one quarter scaled page using one quarter teaspoon of soy sauce on each side, I got a tattered, rustic, uneven look that I really liked. Light in some places, darker in others, and unintentionally, some marks from droplets baked onto the pan in the previous test. I decided I would definitely test this one at full scale to confirm, and I was thinking that this ratio would look even cooler with crumpled paper to enhance those imperfections in the color. But test two, quarter scale with half a teaspoon on each side, came out shockingly well with a pretty solid, dark, even color over most of the surface. Not exactly my preferred rustic style, but I think it looks great, especially for any props that are supposed to be new or finely made. And the full teaspoon test looked almost exactly like what happened to Mike's handout. Very dark, with some noticeably white spots, and I don't think they're from unevenly spreading the sauce, but rather from some chemical reaction in the baking process. And it baked very differently on the back for some reason. In any case, these white spots are a sure sign that we've used too much sauce. And if this happens to you, it's definitely better to just take another five minutes and start over than to add more sauce, hoping it'll fix it. It won't fix it. So ramping up from one quarter scale to full scale for the final round of tests, our quarter teaspoon on each side becomes one teaspoon on each side, half becomes two, you get it. I printed a few copies of this wonderful Shadow Dark dungeon map to test them, and here were the results. With one teaspoon of soy sauce on each side, I ran a smooth test and a crumpled test. And I think the crumpled test came out darker because the brush might have retained some of the soy sauce from the smooth test, but both look great to me. The issue with this one teaspoon per side method is that both of these versions had some patches of white, especially on the back on this one, because there wasn't enough liquid for full coverage. However, comparing them with the unstained white paper, both versions are still quite dark. So if you want to go lighter in color, but still want complete coverage, I recommend keeping the total volume the same or increasing it a little bit by replacing some of the soy sauce with water. And in the second full scale test, T2, Two tea, two teaspoons. 
two teaspoons of soy sauce per side. It came out dark, but even just like in the previous test, except with a little bit of noticeable bubbling. So it might be worth using a bit less than two teaspoons per side, but all of these tests came out completely dry, non-sticky, and yeah, they smelled like soy sauce, but not in an overwhelming way. Then to finish these off right, remember to carefully massage the paper a bit to loosen up the fibers because they do come out a little brittle from the oven. And if for some reason there's high humidity in your house, these could become a little sticky. So I recommend storing them between other pieces of paper, but that's it, fixed. Now check out this video on your screen about how to draw fantasy maps of your own, then go make something cool and consider subscribing or joining the Bob World Builder patrons and channel members to directly support what I do. Thank you and keep building.